how do we work this in a real world example? Well, let's take dollar figures from a different time and compare them from different times. So uh, essentially I would do this, and this is straight out of one of the later sections in your reading. You take the amount in today's dollars, and so what it would be in today's dollars is the amount in year T, so some variable, some year uh, dollars. So in this example, we're going to do Babe Ruth who earned $80,000 in 1931. 1931 is going to be year T, or what if year. Um, and we're going to multiply it by the price level today, that's the current CPI, divided by the price level in year T. So if we're trying to figure out Babe Ruth, he earned $80,000 in 1931, what is that in terms of 2018 dollars? Okay, so what is this? All right. Our current level CPI we're looking for is 2018, and our year T is 1931, and I am just giving you, and if you do the reading, they just give it in there, CPI scores over here, your index scores. In 1931, it was 15.2. In 2018, it was 251. It was like, wait a minute, I thought the base year was 100. Well, if you have a CPI score that is below 100, you're in a year that is before the base year. So uh, the base year in here is going to be somewhere in between 1931 and 2018, probably in the 1980s, somewhere in there. Uh, I can't really say from this data, but this below 100 is before the base year, and this well above 100 is after the base year, and they're just given here as fact. So we take our salary for Babe Ruth in 2018. That's our question. What's that going to be? We take his salary in 1931, which is $80,000, and we multiply it by the price level in 2018, which is a CPI in 2018, which is 251, divided by the price level in 1931, which is 15.2. So $80,000 times 251 divided by 15.2. So obviously, order of mathematics here. We do this first, and then we multiply it by this, and we come up with, in terms of $2018, Babe Ruth was paid $1.321 million, the equivalent. So like in 2018, if you had $1.32 million, that'd be like what Babe Ruth felt like in 1931 at $80,000. Now, if you know anything about Major League Baseball um, and the history of it, Babe Ruth was a stud. He, could, he was the home run champion. He was an outstanding pitcher. He could just do it all. He, he'd walk right out of the ballpark, drink a beer, eat a hot dog, smoke a dog, smoke a, smoke a dog. Uh, he might have done that too. He'd come back and uh, you know, smoke a cigar, go out drinking all night, come back to the ballpark, do the same thing again. Um, he would be paid like Mike Trout money today, if you know who that is, Albert Pujols. A lot more than 1.321. You can't even get a situational left-hander for your bullpen for 1.3 million, and you could have had Babe Ruth. In summary, Babe Ruth was grossly underpaid. Now, on your homework, you're going to be able to do this exact same calculation using this equation. Some of you for golfers, some of you for baseball players, most of you for golfers, I think, for winnings. And just keep in mind, the base year was somewhere in between here. Because 100 is less than 100, that's before the base year. Above 100, that's after the base year. Just a few pointers here. Another thing, if you ever work based on a contract like baseball players did, you want to build an indexation into your contract. What's indexation? Well, consumer price index. Index, see that? Your contract payment should go up over time as inflation goes up in time so you can not, well, take a pay cut like we talked about in the previous video. Good luck.